exalt the Lord on today. We come to celebrate. This is a day of celebration on today. And we come to magnify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands like this.
Worship by Minister Miles Cameron. Our Old Testament reading will be from Deacon Terrell Mann, and our New Testament reading will be from Sidney Mann. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Come on and lift up your voices and bless the name of the Lord in here. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. We shall rejoice and be yes, glad. God. Yes, God. I was glad when they said unto me, Hallelujah. let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, here we are once again just to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for starting us on our way. We thank you for keeping us in our right mind, God. Lord, we thank you for yet another day. For we realize and know, Lord, that if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? God, we're grateful and we're thankful for this celebration time. As we come to celebrate your man's servant, God, we lift up a praise to you for all the things that you've done. Now, God, we pray that you would come into this house and sup with us, God. Be with us even now, oh God. Come into this place, oh God, and uh, make right everything that was wrong. Lord, we thank you even now, God. Forgive us of all our wrongdoings, God. Lord, we bless you and we thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and Hallelujah. praise. And we magnify you. And we lift you up. And we magnify you. And we lift you up. And we give you praise. And we give you glory, God, because you're worthy. Lord, we thank you for who you are. You're the bread when we're hungry. You're the water when we're thirsty. You're the bridge over troubled waters. God, we bless you. And we magnify you. And we lift you up, God. And we lift you above our circumstances, above our problems, above everything that we go through. Lord, because we understand and know that if it had not been for you, coming down from heaven and dying on that old rugged cross for our sins, oh God, where would we be? Have your way, Holy Ghost. Come into this place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, come in. Come, Holy Ghost. Come now, God, and refresh us. Restore us, God. Revive us again. Reinvigorate our hearts, oh God. Reinvigorate our hearts, posture. Back to you, God. In the name of Jesus. And Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you. You are defeated. And God, you are exalted. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never be defeated. And so, God, we pray that you would anoint and bless your man serving on today. Give him a fresh and mighty word that would edify and clarify our walk with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. I'll be reading Psalms 150, and I'll start at the first verse. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with a sultry heart. Praise him with a trembling dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise upon the loud cymbals. Praise upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Our New Testament scripture for our pastoral anniversary is found in St. John chapter 15, verses 10 through 13. In the NIV version, it reads as follows. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Celebration. We come to honor our leader on
in the house of the Lord on today. For I am saved, I am sanctified and filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I thank God for giving me one track mind. God has been so good to me. He's been so gracious. God is an awesome God. And I'm here to let him know that I love him. And I don't just wait until I come into the house of the Lord. But I love to be around the people of God where we all are on one accord. Filling and praising the name of Jesus. So on this day, we have come to celebrate a man of God. Yeah. God has blessed me to know this man all of his life. Yeah. I am his sister and I am older yeah. than him. All of his life, God has blessed me to know him. And I've watched God save him, yeah. change him, yeah. change his heart, change his mind, change his attitude. Yeah. I've watched God change that man. And I thank God that he is my leader yeah. on today. I am going to introduce our speaker, our leader, and the founders of Goodwill at this time. I ask that you stand with me as we receive the leaders of the founders of Goodwill Community Church of God in Christ, our own superintendent James Mann and Shirley Mann. Superintendent James Mann and Shirley Mann founded the Goodwill Community Church of God in Christ in 2006. They are now enjoying the fruit of their labor and able to smell the flowers as they are living. God yet talks to them. God yet speaks to them. And God yet is a powerful man in their lives. They are still crying out loud in the wilderness and they are still here to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God bless you, superintendent and mother man. Now our guest, Pastor Robert Jr. and Prophetess Alicia Tucker, an anointed man and woman of God, building the kingdom of God for the Superintendent and Mother Man. Yes. We praise God. Hallelujah. How many come to lift up the name? We already started lifting up his name. Because he's worthy. He's worthy. So come on, clap your hands on today. I will lift up your name. I will lift up your name. I will lift up your name. 
mighty. God is gracious and he is mighty. God is gracious and he is mighty. God is gracious and God 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 is mighty. Because God is worthy of the glory. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. And his train filled the temple. And his train filled the temple. See, what I learned is, in the Bible days, when a king went to battle, and after he won that battle, he would cut off the robe of the king that he defeated. And he would add that to his robe. So when your king came in the building, and they saw the train, they would know all the battles that he had won. So when Isaiah said, I saw the Lord, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple, that lets me know he's a mighty God. That lets me know he's an everlasting father. That lets me know there's nothing that God cannot do. Hallelujah. Oh God, I bless the name of Jesus for God is good. God is holy and God is worthy. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank God that we are here to celebrate this man that I love so much. I love him so, so much. He know if I have it and I can do it, I might say no, but I'm going to try to do it. This is my brother yeah. also. And as my mother, we were trying to get things together. And she said, well, don't worry about it. I said, well, we can do it. No, 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 because you, you say you can't. He's saying no. I said, we just like to give each other a hard time. But I love him yeah. with all of my heart. Yeah. I thank God for his life, health, and strength. I thank God because the enemy would love to take him. Yeah. The enemy tried to steal him from us yeah. multiple times. But again, God is high and lifted up. And because Jesus lives, we can all face tomorrow. At this time, we are going to receive our celebratory greetings in this order. Our greetings is going to start with the first lady of the Southern Tier District, Evangelist Mother Shirley Mann. Yes. After Mother Mann, we are going to hear from Sister Sherry McKnight, yes. a member of Goodwill Community. Right. Then we will hear from my guy, Minister Shy Fears, yes. and from Zion Dominion Global Cathedral, Global Ministries Church of God in Christ. Then we're going to hear from our friend, Pastor Gary Jones, the pastor of the Cornerstone of Wisdom Church of God in Christ. And then closing us out with these words from friends is going to be Pastor Craig Bridgen, pastor of the True Bethel, pastor of True Bethel Baptist Church in Niagara Falls, New York. You were last, you're not. Then we're finally going to close it out with words from First Lady Webster. Amen. In that order, you may come at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. So we come to celebrate. Yes. Hallelujah. We come to celebrate. Yes. I know what God brought him from. Yes. Everybody say, I knew him all his life. I knew him when he was in the womb. Hallelujah. God did a miracle. Who would have thought? My God. My baby was going to be our pastor. Yes. My pastor. Yes. That's why I got to bless his name. Yes. Because God is good. I pray for my boy. Yes, I did. Over oh, his pastor. But I prayed for him. Yes. My whole aim was, Lord, I don't want my boys on this corner with a hoodie. Yes. See, during that time, I don't know if they still doing it now. But they wore hoods. So if they hold hood, they were thugs. Yes. That's how I felt. Oh but I thank God how he saved them. Yes. Sanctified them. And filled them with the Holy Ghost. And let him sit under us. Until he got it. Yeah. Oh, when he got it. Yeah. I thank God for him. Yeah. He's teaching me. Yeah. Woo. He's teaching me. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, I got to keep being taught. Yeah. I got to hear his word. Thank God for all of this. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you all that coming to celebrate our pastor. Yeah. Thank God for my friend. Amen. God is a healer. Yes, he is. We ain't stop praying. That's why I love the 
the name Jesus. I do. I do when y'all start talking about Jesus. I feel it all in. Oh, Jesus is the reason I'm here today. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. So we congratulations. I thank God for my daughter. She's a strong woman. She got to be. She's going to live with him. Oh, I know, I know. I praise for her. And I thank God for you. I thank God for my grands. I thank God for my daughter. I'm so thankful. I am. I'm so thankful. The Lord has made ways that this day came about. I told myself, who's doing it? See, they keep things out of my ear. But you don't leave me in my office. I love to be when the service starts. I said, what are y'all doing? How's the service going on? Don't put me in no office. So you know I had to fuss. They said, it's the, it's, it's the pastor. I said, all right. I learned obedience. Even to my son. I learned obedience. I didn't come to carry it. The torch was given to him. The torch was given to you. And I honor you. because he made way. I thank God for my daughter. They learn it. They learn it. Pray for them. Pray for us. Don't forget us. Goodwill Community Church. God bless you. possible with God when you include God in all your life choices and situations. The impact of this ministry has healed my daughter in sickle cell crisis. My daughter was going in the wrong direction to experience a healed heart. My son who was closed off emotionally, today his heart is open and willing to receive love. I was experiencing a broken heart, hopelessness in every area of life. Today, my answer is everything is, my answer to everything is God has us. Yes. God is able. Yes. God can yes. and he will. Yes. The reason me and my children continue to come and believe with pastor and everyone here is because I see the pastor's parents. Yes. I see his siblings. I see his wife and children, nieces and nephews, believing with all of us in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ together. Not only just believing, but seeing things manifest. Yes. Yes. Pastor Man has mastered being his family, uh, putting his family first and letting that be his first ministry. Yes. <clears throat> um, each encounter this is the last thing, and I'm going to be done. Each encounter that uh, me and my children have experienced with Pastor Man, I just want to say it's feeling more and more like encountering Christ. Yes. I thank you, Pastor, thank you. for your obedience, your diligence, and most of all, your love for God. Amen. Awesome. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a good one.
good response right there. Um, give honor to God, uh, who's the head of my life, uh, giving honor to our founders. Yeah. yeah. Praise God for them. Amen. Yeah. Uh, praise God for Pastor and Lady Tucker. God bless you. Amen. To celebrate so this evening. Yeah. Uh, the bishop to be. I'm looking at two bishops, and Pastor Tucker know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And the first lady, man, um, I thank you for the privilege and opportunity to stand here to speak. Uh, there's so much that I can say. Um, first things first, you already know that uh, between you and Pastor Kel, y'all my big brothers in ministry. And so I hope I'm still your little brother in ministry. <laughs> um, there's a lot I can say. First of all, Pastor Kyle is um, the only person I know that can be in the middle of a sermon preaching and will rib on somebody and then go right back to preaching the same message and flow on the anointing. The only man, and I'll be cracking up in my seat watching them, but the anointing is on them heavy. And uh, one thing I appreciate, appreciate about Pastor Kyle, man, is if you notice, is that there's a lot more young men in ministry that are coming around you. And I think that speaks to who you are as a man of God. And one thing I want to tell you is that as they're coming around, be careful. Um, because one thing I'll say is I've never asked you for an opportunity to preach ever. But it's to show you that the people that are coming around you, the young men that are coming around you, and don't need them like, means they want to glean from what you have. Yes, 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 yes. And so, um, I have a pastor. My pastor is Bishop Roger Kennings, and I thank God for him. Yes, yes. But uh, a few months ago, I want to say, I came to the church. And Pastor Kyle, this is, I just want you to see how much of an encourager he is and how you should appreciate the one who is the shepherd over your life. And um, I walked into the service and he said, you know, the Lord spoke to me about you. I'm like, me? What are you? <laughs> why, 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 what has he got to say to you about me? And uh, he said, um, I got a word for you. And he brought me back into, into the office. And, you know, I was at a place in my life where, you know, my praise was restricted. <laughs> It wasn't restricted because someone was holding me back. It yeah. was restricted because the weight of life had just gotten so heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Pastor Kyle, for whatever reason, God placed me on your heart. And he pulled me into the office and he had a conversation with me. And he said, what you can never do is you can never allow the enemy to take your praise. Yeah. He said, because there are people who lie on your praise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. came from Pastor Kyle Mann. And in the middle of having that conversation he went to the drawer and he pulled out a bottle of oil mm -hmm. yes. and he prayed over the oil and he placed it in my hand he said I want you to have this oil yeah. keep it this is Pastor Kyle yes. yeah. are you following what I'm saying yes. and so I looked up what it means to be a leader and I looked at the origin of the word and I'm almost done I'm sorry <laughs> and I looked up the origin of the word and uh, the old English word is Ladon and Ladon literally means one who goes as a guide. Yes. Yeah. And so if he's your leader, just like Moses led the people out of captivity, yeah. Yeah. he led them as a guide. Yeah. And so just as you follow your GPSs, if this is your pastor, everyone in Goodwill, I need you to stand up. If this is your pastor, I want you to stand. Pastor Kyle Mann is not just your pastor, yes. but he's your guide. Yes. Yes. He's yes. your old man. And so if you appreciate what it means to have a guide, I want you to clap your hands yeah. and stand on your feet and give God praise for your God. Shout out back out to you. <laughs> Praise God. I tell you, it's God is in this place today. Thank I just you, Lord. Feel Thank it. you, Lord. Yes, you can't have a spiritual celebration without having the Lord. Yes, yes, I'm in this place. Amen. Amen. And I admire this young man. Thank you, Lord. You know, because he's led by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And we realize that the Spirit of God is an ever moving spirit. Yes. The Spirit of God doesn't stay in one place, but yes. it's moving. Yes. And we honor this man because he's moving along with the Spirit Thank of God. You. God don't put lazy people yes. in the pain. Oh, amen. Yeah, yeah. amen. So I admire him and his brother. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Certainly we praise God today for their lives, for his life. 
as being a pastor of this ministry. Thank you, Lord. And for, certainly for Lady Man. Yes. Bless you. Amen. All the pastors that are here, God bless you. And certainly to Superintendent Man, the first lady of this district. Amen. Lady Man. I praise God for you guys. Y'all have such sweet spirits. Thank you, Lord. You know, and it's something that when you can have your family Amen. To follow you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That goes a long way, you know, because you have lived something to prove something to them that they have seen a life that you have lived and they decided that you were the man that they were going to follow. Amen. And for a father to pass the torch to a son and knowing that he's worthy to carry on this business of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for that. Amen. But you know what? I, I honor both of them here, Carol and Kyle. Amen. I don't know if y'all have ever noticed, you know, they say twins kind of think alike. Uh, they they communicate in such a way. You know, I've, I've watched them. And I've been in services. And it was amazing how they talk to each other without moving their lips. <laughs> That's something. And I would look at them. And, I was <laughs> and they'd be talking to each other. <laughs> and they didn't say one word to each other. Praise God. It's, it's something. At, at, at first I was saying, is these brothers aliens? Or? <laughs> but certainly we honor this man of God. I admire him. They're motivated. They're motivating. Yes. And, you know, Goodwill Community Church, y'all yeah. have an awesome pastor. Amen. Amen. because I'm much older than he is, so I can say that. Yeah. But I honor him because he's a man of God. Thank you, Lord. And I appreciate that. I love seeing that. You know, I didn't grow up in the church. I wish I had. You know, but God saved me. Yeah. Amen. And he sanctified me and filled me with his holy ghost. Yeah. Amen. I always say, I wish I would have started earlier. You know, but I had something to do in life in order to get me to this place. Oh my God, my God. When I came into the church, said that you came into a meeting one day. Yes. And God changed me in that meeting. Yes. Amen. My wife got saved before me and I certainly honor that Amen. Uh, woman of God myself. That's my wife. Come on. Amen. I thank God for her. And she got saved before me and she started ministering and I was not to be outdone. I was not going to let her out of me. So I said I got to get myself together yes. and get into the church. Amen. So, you know, God delivered me from drugs, from smoking. Yes, Amen. And then lined me up with people such as these young men here. Pastor Kyle, man, I thank God for you, brother. I can't say that enough. And and, 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 and I pray, Lord, that, that the Lord will continue to raise you up Amen. in the way that he's doing. Just stay, work, just stay faithful to him. Yes. And we ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Amen. You changing them too. <laughs> Give him a hand. I am so humbled and excited to be here uh, with you all this evening. Um, first, I got a little attitude. Um, y'all, all y'all pretty, y'all anointed, y'all. It's y'all got the monopoly on the Holy Ghost. I got a little attitude uh, just from the siblings and and uh, being here with you all today. Uh, mother, you did not have to worry about that one wearing no hoodie. I was sitting back there. I couldn't get into worship because the waves is dipping so bad. He wouldn't go hide the waves with no hoodie. We certainly give God praise uh, for those waves. Certainly want to celebrate the founder, superintendent, and lady man. I am so humbled to be in your presence. Uh, I was young. I used to sneak over. Uh, my cousin John Garner, you know, I'm full gospel, yeah, and yeah. he would always tell me we weren't saved. You know, y'all Baptists, y'all ain't saved. We, the Church of God Christ is saved. Uh, so I would sneak over, see, waving your hand, Mama, I see you. I would sneak over uh, and shout with y'all and then pretend like I, I was saved when I was a Church of God in Christ. Uh, but I am thankful for growing up uh, and being around uh, Pastor Man who is the same wherever he is at. Um, it doesn't matter if you see him in the mall, he's the same. It doesn't matter uh, if you see him in a convention, he's the same. Uh, 
and the world is full of phony people, uh, full of counterfeits, but I'm thankful uh, that uh, he is humble. So glad uh, to be with so many people. I love the Tuckers who he about to preach y'all silly, uh, and uh, I'm going to get out of the way. When I was in high school, middle school, I was not the most athletic. I couldn't play sports to save my life, so I decided the easiest sport for me to play, mother, was baseball. Uh, so I, I, I remember playing baseball. I couldn't hit that ball to save my life. Didn't matter what I did. I prayed. They told you pray. I was Father, in the name of Jesus, just let me hit this ball. I couldn't hit the ball to save my life. But I was fast. I could run. I was fast. And I remember uh, one of the best hitters on our team, Dion Smith, uh, got injured and could not run. And they told me I could be a pitch runner. So Dion could hit the ball, but he did not have the ability to run. But he hit the ball, but he was still able to see me run what he hit. I'm so thankful, Superintendent, that you were able to hit the ball, but God has someone in place to run with what you hit. I'm thankful. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run. shall become one. Yes. Ah, so yes. you got to talk about both of them. Yes. Both of them. I'm telling you, I'm so honored to be here. I'm honored that you even asked me yes. to be on program. Yes. I'm honored. Um, I, I, I think about it. I said, he's such a such a brother. I mean, he just yeah. shows brotherly love yeah. Yeah. to yeah. each one of us, to my husband and yeah. to myself. I'm so grateful. But his wife, I have known for years. Yeah. I have grown up with her. We've grown together. I'm older than her, though. <laughs> but we've grown together. We were in Sunday school together. We were in the choir together. Um, she ushered. I didn't usher with you, though. Um, but we were there. We was in ministry together. I'm telling you, I have never seen a sweeter young lady. She has grown to be such a woman of God. I don't know anything other than that. I have never Thank seen her Lord. out of character or out of mind. Yes. Actually, whatever you asked her to do, she was ready to do. Yes. She always, it was like, the, the best way I could picture her or give to describe her to you is somebody in military. Come on now. Somebody who got on armor and they're prepared yes. and ready for battle. Yes. And whatever somebody asked her to do, she was like, I'll do it. Yes. If I asked her to do something in Sunday school, she said, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, and I'm so grateful. But the thing that comes to my mind is you would have never, back to Mother Man, you would have never known what God has in store. Yeah. Sometimes we look at children and we look at, 
our sons and our daughters, we really don't know what we're preparing them for. But we just know God is in the plan. Yes. We know he's in the plan. Yes. And so I'm so grateful to see what God is doing for you, yes. what he's elevated you to, yes. and what he's about to do. Yes. Can I say this to you, Chanel? He is not finished with you. Yes. Your dreams and your visions and your things that you've had before the Lord, they haven't died. Yes. Honey. They're ready to go. They're still ready. You just got to do what God has you to do with your children first. Children, family comes first. But one thing I know for sure, God is about to take you to a place that you've been desiring for years and years. He's about to do it for you. So hold on to it. Eyes have not seen. Neither have ears heard. What God has in store for you to. Because you're one. God bless you. God bless each and every one of you that came up to give those words of encouragement to our pastor. Now we're going to have another selection from our praise and worship team. Please say amen for them as they come. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The word of God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your mind. Trust in the Lord with all your strength and lean not to your own understanding. Hallelujah. My prayer is, God, I want to hide your word in my heart. Hide your word in my heart that I will not sin against you. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Thank you. 
Well, come on, let's give God praise. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Somebody give God praise. Oh, you can do a little bit better than that. Come on, somebody give God praise. Come on, I don't come out on Sunday night just for nothing. Come on. I came out to give God praise. Come on, can you think of one thing that you can thank God for, give God praise for? Come on, come on, he kept me in the land of the living. Come on. Come on, saints of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to help you give somebody a reason why we give God praise. Turn to somebody and tell them he woke me up this morning. Come on, tell somebody else that said he woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. Come on, he didn't have to do it. But he did. You see, some folks wait to be delivered from cancer. Some folks wait to be delivered from a head-on collision. Just because I thank God that he woke me up this morning. I was able to put my pants on with my own mind. Come on, thanks to God. I was able to give him praise. I just give God praise just for anything. If I have breath in my body, that's enough for me to give God praise. I wonder if I have anybody that can help me bless the name of the Lord. Yeah. 
But this was, became the only option yes, yes, yes. is to say yes to the Lord. Amen. We honor the Lord for what he is doing. Yes, Lord. So just to behold the beauty of the Lord. Yes. Yes. And to come to inquire in his temple. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank God for it. We have come out today to celebrate what God has done. Yes. And what God continues to do. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. In the life of this leader. Amen. Yes. Amen. And his wife, Amen. Pastor Kaya Man. Yes, yes. Amen. Um, it is very easy um, to separate uh, the brother from the man of God. Yes, right? yes, yes. It's not difficult for me Amen. to separate Amen. the brother yes, from sir. the man yes, of God. Sir. Amen. And I praise God for him. Yes. His life and his dedication. Yes. To the Lord and to his family and to the ministry. Amen. Amen. In a day where a lot of folks, a lot of leaders took this COVID as an option to let it go. My God. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Thank the leaders still say yes to the Lord. Yes. And I praise God for Thank him. Jesus. To my father. Amen. The founder of this ministry. Amen. Amen. My superintendent, I honor him and to the lady next to my wife. She's the love of my life. Yeah. Come on, help me celebrate my dear mother. Saints of God, uh, it is easy uh, to have an opportunity. Oh, to God bless you. Good to see you. I know you spoke a mighty word on this morning. Jesus. Amen. And I thank God for you. It is. It is an easy assignment um, because most people put up here and I look at it and it says it's the ministry of giving 
but truly it is an opportunity for prosperity. Yes, yes, yes. That's right, that's right. That's why it boggles my mind that when it comes time to give, uh, our spirit drop. Yes. Because this is an opportunity for prosperity. Yes, right. yes, yes. Uh, I'll give you twofold, and we're going to go raise this offering for an honorable man right. um, who does wonderful things. I thank God for my brother, Pastor Tucker. Amen. Amen. I bless you. I bless you. Uh, this is really, I saw his son um, in the shop, and I said, man, for real, like, your father, that's my that's my brother. Amen. I love that man. Amen. And I thank God for him. The Bible says this. Because uh, I don't give fairy tales. I don't give new shoe blessings. That's right. It's not what I'm here for. I just want to give you an opportunity for God to bless you. Yes, Amen. sir. Yes. yes. I'm not worried about my giving, Pastor Chisholm, because the Bible says he gives seed to the soul. Yes. That's right. On one side, he said, I give seed to the soul. Yes. Right? Then he tells you what that instruction is to bring your tithe and your offering. Right. I give seed to the soul. He said, bring your tithe and your offering. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing what he gave me? Then he turned and called it mine. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You get that Thursday. Yes. <laughs> bring it and sow it. Yes. What I gave you, right. bring it so. He said, see, when I open up the windows of heaven yes, God. and pour you out a blessing yes. that you won't have room enough to receive, yes. I'd rather just give him the Bible. Right. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer. The word. I don't know about you, but I got some stuff that I'm tired of taking away out of my pocket. Yes. And I need God to rebuke it now. Yes. Come on, I know somebody with chop wood, well, not chop wood. <laughs> he rebuked that too. I got loans. I said, God, stop it. Stop it. I can tell you, God stopped. Yes. The, he stopped the word because I gave. He stopped it. $18,000 in college debt. I told him, you're going to keep getting this $5. I'm not giving you no more than that. Come on. I was faithful with my letter. I said, Lord, I'm going to give you the five. Yes. But I continued to do the work of ministry. Yes, sir. I paid my tithes. I paid my offer. Yes. Yes. I went to go look, run my credit for something else. And I said, I know the student loan is going to come up. Uh -huh. But I went, I went to go look at it, Lorraine. Yeah. Lorraine been on me since yeah. kindergarten. <laughs> $18,000. TC has said, your debt is zero. zero. I said, wait a second. Go check it. Yeah. I was cool with the five. Yeah. 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 It said now your balance is zero. zero. Yeah. So yeah. Elder Jones, I said, why? Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. This ain't why y'all do it, but just hold on. Yeah. Watch this. It said for the past 10 years, My God. you have been known as a man of the cloth. Mm. Yeah. So because I've been known as a man of the cloth for 10 years. Come on. We're going to forgive everything. everything. Because I gave seed from the one who gave me the seed. I sold it into good ground. And God took care of everything else. Do I have a sword in the house on today? Moses, God told Moses, because y'all want 
the Bible. I'll give it to you. He says, I'm going to make you so blessed yes. that those who bless you, yes. I'm going to bless them. Yes. Watch this. Y'all going to be so powerful. Don't say, I ain't giving them. Those who curse you, yes. <laughs> I'm going to curse them. Now, that's not me. That's the Bible. What an opportunity God has given us. Come on. To sow seed and be a blessing to a blessed man. I thank God for every opportunity he has given me. That's why every time I get an opportunity to sow something into these folk, beautiful people over there, I got to do it. That's right. Because I need to be blessed. Right? I need to be blessed. So this, this, this chance that God has given us, I want you to get a seed in your hand. This is not a special offer. I'm going to start this offering off with Two hundred dollars, cause I love him. Love him, love him. He's my brother. Yes. <laughs> he knows if I got it, he got it. Yes. Amen. And we ain't got it, we ain't got it. <laughs> but if we ain't got it, we gonna get it. But we get it the right way. Now. Come on, say. That's right. Cause we go to God. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Pastor Jones talked about the communication that's been going on a long time. Yes. <laughs> but I praise God for His life. Thank you, Lord. I praise God for his life. There is not a moment of ups and downs that I have not seen. But the greatest thing that has never left is his yes. Yes. Even if we got to talk and vent it out, I get it. But I'm going to show up on Sunday. I'm going to show up on Tuesday. I'm going to pray for you. Even when you don't show up, I'm going to pray for you. That's what the man of God does. He is a watchman yes. on the tower over his people. I'm going to ask if every leader, every pastor in the house, if you could just join me with $100. Uh, this is an opportunity for prosperity. This is an opportunity for God to bless you. And again, don't forget what I love about it. Pastor Jones, God gave it to me anyway. He gave me a seed to be a blessing. Amen. And I'm, I'm, I'll get the spe- I'll get the special offer later because I know the house is going to take care of them. I made sure the house took care of them. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 This poor frog that don't praise his own pound. Listen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> We're standing all across this place. I want to praise God. Um, as pastoring and all of my pastors will know this, and I've been experiencing this since pastoring. Um, whenever you could take a Sunday off, you praise God for it. Yep. And somebody that can speak on your behalf, you praise God for it. I'm saying that to say, I want to just say a special thank you to Pastor Tucker, because it was your day off today. Because yeah. <laughs> it was your pastoral appreciation this morning as well. But he decided, he said, that's my brother, he's going to come anyway. So I celebrate you. Amen. 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 And I thank God for you and your sacrifice to, uh, to the ministry. Amen. If you are giving, uh, this is where if you are giving through uh, Cash App, Cash App, that is dollar sign KY Man, M A N N 21. Once again, that is dollar sign KY Man, M A N N 21 for Cash App. Amen. I'm, I'm going to pray um, God's blessing again. I'm going to ask if every pastor or leader of you would join me um, with a $100 seed. I'm going to give two with this. Uh, I'll call for a special offer. You can give whatever seed again. I want I want everybody to be a part of this moment of prosperity. So into a life uh, of, of a great man. Amen. Oh, that cash up coming in already. I can't check it. Amen. The Bible says, <laughs> it says, before you pray, I answer you. <laughs> it says, wow, before you even act. He's coming in. We thank God for this man of God. Come on, let us pray. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for being a fulfiller of your word. For Lord, you said you would provide seed to the sower. And Lord, we thank you for doing that. Now, Lord God, as we come, God, to sow seed, God, into the life, God, Lord, I pray, God, that you allow these seeds to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, I thank you for his life and his sacrifice, God, as we sow this seed into your man of God. And Lord, I pray for every seed sower, God, because of their obedience to you, God, that you would continue to show yourself mighty and show yourself strong in their lives. Father, this is our prayer, and we believe it to be so in Jesus' name. Come on, if you believe it, somebody shout amen. 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 We will be in the hands of our uh, uh, leader. He'll be leading you out. Where's my baskets? Come on. All right, if you could give slide your offering. Come on. Let's do it like this. Come on up here. Come on up here, son. You ain't dressed for church. Get on up here. Come on up here. Turn around right here. Turn around right here. Turn around right there. Amen. Hold on. Let me get these, let me get these directions. Amen. Amen. If you from my left, my left, if you would, everybody come out to your, your left, my right, your nearest aisle. So your aisle is right there. Your aisle is right here. Amen. Your aisle is right here. Your aisle is right there. Amen. So if everybody can face your right, my right, your left, and come down your nearest aisle. Come down your nearest aisle from the from the rear to the front. We can do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, lead him out. special offerings at this time you can come I thank God for the church and all of the uh, church leaders um, what they were given unto their pastor and I give God praise for them um, for their report so if you can just come on and stand so your pastor know who gave amen come on amen let's come on let's give God praise thank you thank you so much amen thank you so much um, uh, my wife and Come on. No, no, no. Come on. Baby, come on. Come on. Amen. You don't give to be seen. You ought to be seen. Yeah. Amen. We thank God for Superintendent. Come on. Let's give God praise for Superintendent. We thank God for Lady Jones. Amen. We thank God for Elder Jesse Vincent Butler giving $500. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Uh, Minister Miles, he gave $250. Come on. Give God praise. Amen. Uh, missionary. Melissa gave five three fifty. Come on, give God praise. Missionary Bobby gave five hundred three fifty. Come on, give God praise. Amen. I'm gonna give another hundred. Amen for my wife. She couldn't be here. My babies are sick. You know they love Uncle Kyle. Well, they not feeling well, but we gonna we give God praise for them. Amen. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, y'all praise God for my older brother. Big Tim. Yes, God. 
good reference. Yeah. Amen. Saints of God, it is it is truly, I thank God for let me get the mic for superintendent before I sit down. I want to praise God for uh, Lady Lady Chanel. Amen. Amen. My sister-in-law, my sister-in-law. I thank God for you. Amen. Amen. And your commitment to, to be by the side yes. uh, of the leader. Amen. And we give God praise. Amen. At this time, we will put it back into the hands of the givers. We go further into this service. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. First Lady, whom we love so much, I'm going to ask Sister um, Evangelist Melissa Hall to come up as we make a presentation to our First Lady. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hey Amen. God bless you all. What can I say about our First Lady? She really is indeed a jewel. Yeah. She is a blessing to the ministry. We can always, I know I personally can always count on her for an encouraging word an encouraging smile. When I stand up here and lead praise and worship and I turn to my left, I can always expect a smile from our first lady. She loves us. She loves the people and we love her. She's such an encourager. She really is a great encourager and I appreciate the text messages. You just don't know. Sometimes a text message means the world to us. Something is that. I may not see your face. I thank God for healing your body. We thank God that we're praying for you. I have 10 nieces I have two boys. I don't have any girls. I have ten nieces, and they have graced me with Kylie, who is my goddaughter. <laughs> so I thank God just for them thinking of me so I can just love on Kylie, boo. So from the women of Goodwill Community Church, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We celebrate you. We appreciate you and all that wonderful stuff. God bless you, Lady Chanel. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on and get back to praise in this place. Oh, he's worthy of a praise. Come on, come on, let's just take a praise break right here. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If he's been good to you, come on and lift his name up. If he's ever healed your body, you ought to give him praise. If he's ever opened up a door, you ought to praise him. just thank you for everyone that is here on today. Yeah. We love you. Thank you so much for coming to honor my husband, yeah. Pastor Kyle. Man, I always say the hardest working pastor. Yeah. I know. Amen. And I just wanted to take a moment and honor Lady Tucker. Yeah. Amen. Because we are so honored yeah. that you were able to come here, Pastor Tucker. Amen. And that you are right by his side. And we want to say happy anniversary yeah. to them. Amen. When I heard that they were coming on this evening, that they accepted the engagement, and it was th it's their day. That's love. That's brotherly love. And we just want to thank you on behalf of Goodwill. Just a little something. Just to say we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for who you are. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. I thank God for I thank God for you. I have my um my Sunday school teacher, she's in the house on today, and she would always tell us it's just nice to be nice. Yes. You don't know what a smile or what a good morning or what a hello will do for somebody, and it can just really change their life at this time. I would like to present my father, my superintendent of the Southern Tier District of Western Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, right. Superintendent James L. Mann. Please say amen for him as he comes. Yeah. Awesome. Giving the instructions. That's quite all right. Before I do anything else, I want to give glory to God. Because as I peruse this room, I see that righteous men and women 
have been fervently praying because I see the effects. Come on, everybody in here. Righteous men and women have been fervently praying because I see the effects. I see what God has done. So to God be the glory for the things he has done and only he could do these things. The last time I saw you, the ones that I see now, you were in a different state. Thank you, Lord. In a different condition. But now you've walked in here on your own power. Thank you, Lord. Individuals that I don't know, you have been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. God has blessed every one of us to be here. And I'm glad to be in the number on today. It is an honor and a pleasure. I'm saved by his power divine. Saved to new life sublime. There was a day when it wasn't sweet, but life now is sweet. There was a day I didn't have joy, but my joy is complete. For I'm saved. I'm saved. Thank God. I'm saved. Sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. The power not to sin. There was a time I thought that I couldn't. That was before these days. And the over here. I first met Pastor I first met Pastor Kyle I guess it was it was early not guess I know it was early around 12:30 a.m. on a Wednesday morning early Wednesday morning when I first met him, and I thank God that he allowed me to be able to be there to see my sons born into this world, had no idea, idea that God would bless me to be able to stand here almost 40 years later. Yes and say that God has saved yes. and sanctified and filled those young men with the Holy Ghost. Just infants. I was a younger man then. I was 34 years old. There was a day Pastor Tucker, God bless Pastor Tucker and Lady Tucker. Thank you so much for coming. The first time Pastor Kill preached at your church, God had, I was in the hospital. Yeah. No, I was home. I was in quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. I was in quarantine. And they said, we're going to kill this preaching at uh, Pastor Tucker. I said, oh, well, I can't go. Everybody went. And when they came back, they said, what a word. And I've been seeing you. I've got to say this because some people are seeing on Facebook. But now when I get a chance to see them, right. now I see you in person. Thank you, Lord. And I've watched and followed you, and I see what God has done. I look at the faces, and I thank God for the light church. God bless you, light church. You show the man's life. And you show the wife's life. I know. I have my wife. And I thank God for her. Pastor, I thank God for you, man. That's my son. Some individuals say, um, how can you tell them apart? People say, well, I can tell this one because he has this. I got a few minutes. His hair is long. His hair is low. He wears a beard. He doesn't. But as I said, I was there on that morning and if I don't look around and I hear the voice I don't know who's talking to me but when I turn around and I look at their faces they both have an expression on their face I've got that picture in my study at home 
where they are sitting there. A green shirt, a red shirt, t-shirts, little fellas like the baby, like uh, Kylie right here. And they, Kyle's hair was a little longer than Kale's at the time. But they both have the same expression that you see them with now. So when I look at pictures and they say pop up or they say daddy or say honey, can you tell who is who? And I know which one it is because I look at the expression. And I know this. There are only two people who never make the mistake of calling Kyle, Kyle, or calling Kale, Kale. Kyle is never going to call Kale, Kyle. <laughs> Kale is never going to call Kyle, Kale, they're just not going to do it. They won't make that mistake. It is impossible. As much as, uh, as much as they say, come on, Kale, come on, Kyle. Mommy, will you tell Kale to stop? They will never confuse one another because they know who they are. They know who they are. In Christ, we should know who we are. We should never be confused with someone who doesn't look like us. Matters not where your fellowship is, where your home is. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's a oneness. I came in this room. You could feel the Spirit in this room. You could feel the Spirit, and I thank God for the Spirit. I honor my wife. Without my wife, we would not be here today. And she says, honey, without you, I know. But without the two of us, we would not be here today. A few days, I was, I was raised in the church. But I didn't receive salvation at a young age. And those things... I used to regret, but not anymore. God saved me. Hey, I'm ready. God saved me. Now, I'm not going to look back with sadness with that. That was my time of making. I was being made. But when these young men, when pastor was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, I had been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. God spared my life. And I thank God for that, that he's allowed me to see this day. Uh, the stories are, I, I have a picture when I was 34 years old, strong man, killed in this arm, uh, Kyle on this arm, holding them up. There came a time when sickness struck my body and they had to come and pick me up. But I thank God that I raised them up in the fear and admonition of God. You depend on him. He's a pastor. He has many. He wears many hats. He is a holy man. A lot of attributes are given to individuals. He is a holy man. I know. We've known him the same length of time. And she can verify this in my witness. He is a holy man. He loves God. He loves the people of God. He is a humanitarian. God gave him the spirit of humanitarianism when in him to be a humanitarian when he was freshman, freshman in, in college, 18. Taking in young boys, bringing these young men to our house, bringing them, showing them. He had studied and his degree was going to be for something else, but God changed that in his heart. And he is the pastor that we see today. He loves God's people. I like, I like to say this. Pastor Tucker, I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed man. I'm blessed. He is a servant of the Most High God. He is an anointed expounder of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the blessing to me is that he is 
my son. God gave me these children. God gave him to me. He treats me with all the respect of a father. He is the pastor of this house. I treat him with all the respect for he is the pastor of this house. When I went to the bishop, bishop said, well, you know, superintendent, now when it comes to dealing with the church, I can't deal with you anymore. I have to deal with him as being the pastor. I said, bishop, I understand that. Now I'm relaxing. I'm re I am. I'm relaxing and I'm enjoying seeing what God has done in his life. I listened to him. Because you can't really speak about one with thinking about the other. But we're talking about Kyle one today. He loves the people of God. He spoke about you. He said he was coming. Pastor Tucker is coming. And then I looked and I said, wait a minute, today is his anniversary. And he's coming. That is a friend and a brother. And he did not come alone. Amen, Light Church. All right. Family, Sister Sanders, family. Auntie Net, family. And friends. Brothers and sisters come together to hear because of him yes. it's because of his life usually you might say that when people are laid across but we're here because of him every one of us have come together because of him and I thank you I love him with the love of God with the love of a father and I'm partial very partial to everybody who loves God no respecter of person, but everyone who, who loves God. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. I love you. Man, I love you. Son, I love you. I want to present to us on today. It is my honor and my pleasure to escort <laughs> to the podium this servant of God, God's man servant, servant to the people, pastor extraordinaire, <laughs> the reverend yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love saying it. The reverend Kyle Lee Man. God bless song my grandfather was singing. Yeah, he was saying, uh, My soul loves Jesus. My soul. Loves Jesus, my soul. my soul. Loves Jesus, bless His name. My soul loves Jesus, my soul. My soul loves Jesus, bless his name. If your soul loves Jesus, just give God a praise on today. I am not going to stand here long. I appreciate every word that has been said, every word that has been spoken. It is a joy, it is a privilege to be the pastor of the Goodwill Community Church of God in Christ. I love the Lord with all of my heart. I promise you, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And I'm excited about living this life free from sin. I'm excited about being around people who like living this life free from sin. I'm glad being around people. It's a lot of people say, I didn't ask to be this. I was pulled into this. 
I was blessed into this. I was blessed that the Lord allowed me to be in the position that I am, and I love the Lord. Um, let me honor my father. I thank God. He's one of a kind because he's my only father. He is my dad and my spiritual father. And I thank God for him. Um, I thank God I am blessed to be fourth generation preacher and teacher. Um, the late, great superintendent Peter Penderman. Um, he was my great grandfather. And then my grandfather superintended Willie G. Hall. He's my mother's father. And then my father is here in the land of the living. So come on, help me bless God for my father as well as my mother. I thank God for my mom. And I am just so grateful. I thank God for uh, my siblings who are here. I think every one of my siblings are here. I'm saying of my brothers and my sisters. Um, that's uh, Sister Melissa, Sister Bonnie. Everybody know Pastor Kale, there's uh, Deacon Tear, that's my brother, and in the back waving her hand in the blue, that's the oldest of the bunch, that's Saranda Man, and we thank God for her, amen? Amen, it's just such a appreciative to be here. I thank God for these pastors, for Pastor Hauser, my God. It is an honor and a privilege to have you here with us, sir, on uh, today to these ministers, to these preachers, to uh, Minister Fears, and to... <laughs> Pastor Bridget, I'm about to call him Bishop Bridget, but we thank God for him and and to my my, my brother, my brother-in-law is here. To Pastor Chisholm, God bless you and your lovely wife. Honor to see you. To Pastor Jones and and to Superintendent. Now now you want to talk about the hardest work of Superintendent? I thank God for Superintendent Williams and his lovely wife. God bless you to uh, uh, to Lady Finch and to uh, Dr. Finch. Appreciate you to. Uh, Lady Webster and and I, I, I we were with them on last week with Pastor Webster it was such a joy to be in the house with them to all of you God's people to the Light Church. It's the lightest church on Kimbo. I thank God for you all being here and being with your pastor, I thank God for having my family, I thank God for my aunt and, and my cousin TC and my, my cousin Aaron, God bless you appreciate you being here um, to, to, to uh, uh, the Sanders, I love uh, Sister Sanders and Mimi, God bless you to all of you God's people it's such a joy to my minister these these guys, come on, stand up Mom. I thank God, this is their minister Cameron is such man, he's so faithful I appreciate him. Love you so much with the love of God. Thank God for you. Um, I can't say, what can I say about Elder Designate Butler? Man, that's, that guy is the hardest worker, man. I appreciate these guys. Um, I, 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 I'm going to single him out to uh, uh, Devon. Come on, that's, yeah. man, I, that's my guy right there. I love him, man. And I appreciate to the Goodwill Community Church family. Love you all. We are where would you see where we are now? God blessed us. The Lord worked a miracle. Where we were, it wasn't for us anymore. And God said it was time to go. Have you ever been in a situation? I'm trying to stay calm. Have you ever been in a situation where you knew you had to go but didn't know where to go? We were in a situation we knew it was time to go. We knew we, it had to go. We couldn't stay here, but we didn't know where we were going. It is in that hour God always have a ram in the bush. And God will allow you to meet a man that don't even know he's been sent to bless you. God has anointed people to bless you, and they don't even know they're anointed to bless you. God has raised people up to sow into your life and they don't even know it. But when you see it, all you say is, you the one. And the Lord blessed us. Oh, it was so frustrating. It was so aggravating. But I wasn't going to give up. Nobody told us this road was going to be easy. All we say is, I don't believe he brought us this far to leave us. And when we needed a place, God's word said, I promise that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I thank God.
God that the Lord was with us. I didn't come to preach because I got a preacher. I got a preacher. I thank God I got a preacher and I asked him to come. I said, I need a preacher to come. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me do something first. I thank God for my family. The Lord has blessed me to be the father of four beautiful daughters. Um, real quick, come stand with me, daughters. Come on, this is my oldest. Come on, say man for Madison. Come on, Sid. This is Sydney and this is Noel. Sid, go, Noel, go, go get Kylie. These, 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 these are my babies. I thank God for them. Come on, bless God for my babies. Tuck, they told me, they said, man, you should try for one more. I said, who? They said, man, you may get a boy. I said, and I may get another girl. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I told them. I said, you, I, okay, for all y'all that believe that the man controlled us, I'd have tried it all. I'd have tried pills, I'd have tried therapy, I'd have. I, this is my house, I'm going to be. I tried every position. I'm sorry, baby. I can try. I'm sorry, dog. I apologize. I'm sorry. I right, could. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I get kind of like that. I try to stay. I'm sorry, baby. You're right. You're right. But I tried it all. And as you can see, it ain't in my control. So I said, Lord, I thank you. And I thank God because you know I look at them. I wouldn't trade these girls for one more. They are my heart. Come on, ladies. You know, stand with us. She already had words, but just stand real quick. She's been sick. She's been afflicted, but God bless her. She is here, and I thank God for my family. They support me. I'm busy, and I run, and my wife constantly said, baby, why don't you rest? And I say, okay, I will. Uh -huh. And just a quick story how it is in my house. I rest, but these four don't know what it means to rest. I went and I told my wife, I said, I'm going to go lay down, baby. I'm tired. She said, okay, go lay down. I went and laid down. Pastor, and, and, and I heard my wife scream out, Kyle, you got to get to the bathroom. Noelle said she got a spider in her head. So I jump up out of bed from a nap. I go to the bathroom and she said, Here, Daddy, it was a string. I put that string in my hand. This Sunday. This is a Sunday. I put that string in my hand. And with all my might, I threw that string on the floor so hard. I threw it on the floor. She said, what? Did you, Mama, did you get it? I said, it was a string. She said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, here we go. Don't nobody bother. Don't say nothing else to me for the rest of the day. And then my oldest come down. Is everybody okay? I said, now you better go upstairs. But I love my family. Come on, bless God for my family. I thank God because I thank God for everybody here. I thank God for all you young men. I thank God for Damel. Okay. Did I say that right? You sure? Okay. That's Madison boyfriend. I said, uh, I said, okay. She said, uh, 
I'm gonna bring him. He wanted to meet you. I said, okay. She didn't tell him, the Holy Ghost told him. She sat down being all Madison like, covering her face. I said, girl, what? And she said, okay, Dan, I need a minute. I said, okay, take a minute. Holy Ghost said, she won't tell you about a boy. So I said, you got a boyfriend. She's oh, daddy. I said, what's his name? She told me his name. I asked, she said, he wanted to meet you. I said, okay. She said, he coming to church on Sunday. I said, y'all trip. Because you want to meet me while I'm under my pastoral shit. Try to meet me when I'm in my shepherd. Come and talk to me while I gotta be like, well, young man. I said, I want you to meet me when I'm at home cleaning the guns. Now I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm so grateful. I appreciate you coming, man. I thank God for it. I appreciate you coming to you. Yeah, and, and check this out. And he was here this morning. Yeah, I appreciate you coming. Man. Lastly, before I introduce our speaker, I just want to thank God for my praise and worship team. Come on, please praise God better than that. Next to me, they work so hard. And I appreciate them. It is so important to have an anointed praise and worship team. I tell my praise and worship team all the time. I said, I know many say it, but please don't say it. They get up and say, we didn't come here to pump and prime. I say, yes, y'all did. It is your job to get us excited. It is your job to go before God and lift up the name of Jesus. So I know the weight that's on you. So I need y'all to pray. I need y'all to be committed because you do have to come and lift up our spirit. Come on, I may be discouraged. I need you to come in and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I need you to sing me happy. And if you don't want that assignment, don't take it. You don't know the pressure that a praise and worship leader has. They have to come and see why you sitting down staring. And while you staring, they got to still praise God. And they got to keep praising God. So guess what they do got to do? They got to coach you. And when you find, when it finally click, oh, we in praise and worship. Oh, they done already in the third song. So I thank God for praise and worship leaders because they can come so discouraged looking at us sitting there. And they working so hard. But I thank God that they don't do it. They don't do it just for you. They do it as unto God. And I appreciate you, Sister Melissa. Sister Bonnie, Madison, Brooklyn, and Brittany. And to these musicians, I thank God for each of them back. Yeah. Come on, man. Jeremy, I appreciate you, Isaiah. I appreciate all of you, God's people. God bless you, Pastor Webster. Say it's time to hear the word of the Lord. I was gonna ask for a bio. But I said, I don't need one. When people ask me for bio, I say it depends on who it is. I said on one maybe. But certain people, I don't need to hear all of that. I know what I did. And I promise you, they don't care what I did. They shouldn't care. Because the only thing I'm about to say is what's the word about to come before us. And let me tell you something. I, I'm privileged to have not only Pastor Tucker here as a speaker, I'm privileged to have his speaker here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I asked Pastor Tucker to speak, he said, man, yeah. Hold on one second. <laughs> you saw the order of that? He said, yeah, man. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. <laughs> I was on hold. I was on hold. <laughs> he came back and said, man, I got you. I didn't worry about it. I said, okay. No, cool. I'm upset. Then I saw his flyer come out. Yeah. I said, what the world is going on here? 
making me feel all bad and stuff. You don't do that. You don't ask somebody to speak on that, but he didn't tell me. Because <laughs> I sure would have called him and said, that's all right, man. No, you go on to you and your lovely wife. Enjoy it. But he said this, and he was like, I'm going to be there. Pastor Tucker is such a friend. I remember an occasion we were in the Holy Convocation. And um, those of you who know preachers, when another preacher preacher, we get excited. We may come up and tap the podium. We say, what you say, son? <laughs> what? You preaching, man. Watch your foot. <laughs> we talk to the preacher. We get up on the preacher. We let the preacher know I got your back. And if preachers can't get with other preachers, and we would do that, and I remember an occasion, and we were preaching, and he was doing what preachers do. Somebody tried to be more important than they were. I leave that alone. And they made, they said something to him, and I said, "No, nah, we can't have that with another brother." We can't see those whom we love be wronged and we not say anything. I do believe that's why many of the churches still hurt today because you seen it and didn't say anything. And the question is, why didn't you say anything? Who are you afraid of? But God is raising up a generation. You're not going to come in this church. You're not going to come in this church and deceive the people. You're not going to come in this church and pretend to be something that you're not. You're not going to hurt people. You're not going to disrespect people. And God not let the leader check you. You see, we got to go back to checking folk. Uh, we check them, they're going to leave. They was going to leave anyway. They was going to leave anyway. But I thank God for him. And I did that because he's a brother. And I called another brother who was a brother. Because we ain't in this thing by ourselves. We brothers. And we look out for each other. And I appreciate him. He is the pastor of the Light Church. He is the husband of the anointed. Lady Tucker. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, Sometimes I, I ask pastor comes and their wife don't come. Ain't none of my business, Tammy. <laughs> none of my business. But I thank God she was able to come. Thank you so much for being here yeah, yeah, yeah. with your husband. To these men who stand behind him. What an amazing job you all have. He's a friend to me. He is a friend to many. He's respected by so many. But more importantly, he is my brother. Yes. He is my friend. People of God, Goodwill Church, everyone that is here under the sound of my voice, after we hear from this praise and worship team, I'm going to ask if you would stand and remain standing until he tell you to sit. For my guest, my friend and my brother, the one and only, Pastor Robert Tucker. Let's say amen for them as they come. Amen.
sanction this moment yeah. as I decrease you increase and I get out of your way so that you can have your way spirit of the living God breathe in this house in the name of Jesus now bind the devil everywhere we give you praise we give you glory preach to us that we may say that we had an encounter with Jesus. And now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. Come on, if you love the Lord, you ought to give him some praise. Another neighbor, preach to him. Say, neighbor, you're in the right place at the right time, and God has a 
as a miracle with your name on it. Now listen, if that name again to you, you look behind you and say, hey, neighbor, you're in the right place. If you know you have a miracle, give them, I got it, I got it, I got it. Where my miracle folk on today? Where my folk that don't mind praising God? I heard the Bible say from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun that the name of the Lord is worthy. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. Come on, say it again. Hallelujah. Say glory be to God. Come on, just wave your hands in the atmosphere. Ba 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 Y'all ain't talking to get your neighbor and say, neighbor, what the devil meant for evil. Tell him God is turning it around for your good. Say yeah. Come on, clap your hands if you look God. Oh, I feel, I feel some glory tonight. Oh, I feel some anointing tonight. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Listen. I, uh, oh, I feel something about bringing the breakthrough. Just look at him and say, he's all right with me. He's all right. He's all right with me. Man, that 
that the will is similar to the life. And when the Lord come in, we just go crazy. We say nothing. Somebody says it's already done. It's already done. Amen. God bless you. I want to just do my assignment, and we uh, we certainly honor the spirit of Christ that is in this house tonight. Come on, do a praise God for you. Such an anointed, such an anointed atmosphere. Amen. On seventeen, is it sixty or eighty? On seventeen eighty, worldly drive. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So thankful. Thank amen. For what the Lord is. Amen. Doing. Listen, I, I understand uh, time and season. Yes. Yeah. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar yeah. knew the times and the seasons. Yes. I am mindful that there is an 820 kickoff. Yeah. Do I got any mafia in the house? Hey. So, so you know I can't be long. <laughs> I can't be long. Give me about ten minutes. I'm sitting on down. I got to get. I got to get in front of a TV somewhere. Hey, Amen. I'm still going to heaven. I'm still going. I'm still going to heaven. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm just. I'm just Bill's mafia. That's all I'm saying. I'm just. You know, listen. I didn't make the schedule. All right. But I'm sure I'm gonna be in front of that TV soon. Soon and very soon. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, clap your hands if you love the Lord. Amen. I'm so thankful. Amen. For the uh, founders of this great ministry. Amen. 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 Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. One of the things that I've always been kind of jealous of is having a preacher lineage. Uh, I didn't come up uh, as a PK kid. You know, my father told me, have as many women as you can and then don't work, live off of them. And, uh, and none of my, uh, my uncles were preachers, but I had a mother that kept me in church. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. So the Lord says, son, even though you didn't come out of that lineage, you started one of your own. Yeah. So my sons yeah. and their sons yeah. can pick up that lineage. Such an awesome a tribute from superintendent man to his son. Amen. I almost teared up, you know, seeing that kind of affirmation from father to son. And so we honor you, man and woman of God. We are Church of God in Christ. Yes. So, you know, you can't join in. You got to be born. Yes, you know, and so to all of, you know, the superintendents and the district missionaries yes. and the pastors and the first ladies and all of my brothers over here, yes. uh, uh, Pastor Man over there and uh, Cridge and uh, uh, Minister Shy is back there and all of y'all, man, uh, Elder but Elder Designate Butler, amen, amen on today, and all amen. of y'all preachers, amen, certainly thank God, amen, for you, and uh, Light Church, where you at? Decided to travel as you already know. This was my anniversary. Yes, sir. And uh, we had a great time in the Lord. We certainly honor evangelist Doug Hausman yeah. uh, tonight. Amen. That preached us crazy. And uh, I'm so thankful that he decided to come and hang with me tonight. So we honor you, man of God. And amen to everybody. Amen yes. to everybody. But this ain't y'all night. This ain't y'all night. Amen. You know, I love. Uh, I love uh, Pastor Kale Man. Amen. This ain't his night. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to give him uh, uh, the late, uh, what's his name? Bishop John Henry Shear. Right. You know, 
I, I feel a little Bishop John Henry coming on. Amen. Tell somebody it's not your night. Amen. Amen. But we celebrate the man of God who night it is. My man. Come on, y'all. Pastor Kyle He asked me to come preach, and uh, and I dared not told him that his anniversary was on the same night as mine. Because then he would have changed his mind and talked me out of it. But I told him that he's my friend and my brother. No matter what I have to do, I'm gonna move some things around. Amen. To accommodate him, I love him dearly. And uh, some people you look at, and you can just see that they've been groomed for greatness. And you just can look at them and tell, oh, they going somewhere, or they going, they going to be somebody. And when I look at these man boys, both of them, but because this is his night, uh, Pastor Kyle Lee, uh, greatness is all on his life. Amen. That's it. That's it. It's all on his life. And so we honor him on tonight and to his wonderful wife. Amen. Amen. Hey, but there she is, First Lady. Man, we love you today. Come on, can we celebrate that? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. He's half of himself. You ain't here. Yes. I can tell you, he'll lose his mind. He won't know what to do. Hey, Amen. My wife left me for a few days because her mind was dealing with some stuff. And I was I didn't know what to do. Hey, Amen. I was struggling to preach and pastor. I said, Lord, bring my wife home. Hey, Amen. I'm struggling out there. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. All of my children, I believe, Praise is God. here. My, we're uh, a Robert in the back. Robert showed up. Amen. Hey, my dog. We got one of them. She's the baby. Amen, amen, amen. Ashley Robin, wave your hand. Amen. And then my baby boy, Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee. Aaron Lee. Yes, y'all Lee brothers. Aaron Lee. I love all my children. God bless the, uh, uh, I'm about to call you Prophet Jeremiah. God bless. Amen. Jeremiah. Amen. On today. Amen. Amen. And last but certainly not least, to the love of my life. That's my girl. I'm glad that she came with me and hang with me and uh, took some time out of her busy schedule. Yeah. And I thank you, sweetheart, for uh, hanging with me. She said, she said, Bishop, I'm driving with you. I said, come on. Yeah. I said, come on. I just, I just bought her. You know, I tell you where I go. I just, I just bought her. I just bought her a brand new band. Nice. Oh. She said, I'd give you a ride. I'd drop you off. She didn't want to let me drive that bench, unless I'm putting gas in her windy wall. That's all. But listen, I love you. Thank you. Thank you for hanging with me. Come on, let's celebrate for a while. I think I got everybody. Listen, let's go. You may be seated. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Amen on today. Amen. God is a good God, ain't he? And he is, amen, worthy. Amen. To be praised. I want to follow the theme. Amen. On tonight. Amen. The scripture is found in the gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. And I believe the last verse of Amen. Luke. Amen. Luke 2 and 52. The theme. I don't have it right with me, but I believe the theme is impacting uh, influence, oh, impacting man. powerful, impactful power. The impactful power of somebody say influence. 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 Say, say that word again. Influence. influence. Luke 2 and 52, thank you, Jeremiah says, and Jesus increased in wisdom mm -hmm. and God. stature and in favor with God and man. I'll read that again. And Jesus increased oh, yes. in wisdom and stature and in favor 
with God and with man. Look at somebody and say, you have anointed influence. You have anointed influence. Wow, that's you have anointed influence. Yes. One of the things, people of God, that we don't consider in the church today is the power and the relevance of influence. Yes, right? Maybe among leadership circles, we talk about and we understand, amen, the scope and the necessity of influence. But as a church as a whole, you don't oftentimes uh, consider influence. Yeah. We talk about the Holy Ghost and we yes. talk about speaking in tongues and we talk about a man prosperity and we talk about all of these other things. But God is a God of influence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody shout influence. influence. Yes, sir. But brothers and sisters, uh, influence, according to Webster's dictionary, I like the version that Webster defined. That influence is the capacity to cause an effect. Yeah. All right. That literally influence yeah. is when it's an operation will cause things to happen, not just for us, but for others. Yeah. Yeah. It is a notable tool in the kingdom of God because when influence is in operation, it will literally cause change in the lives of people. Yes. Yes. I'm a firm, amen, believer that all of us carry a measure of influence. Yes. But the truth of the matter is, Pastor Kyle and Pastor Kale, is that many of us would never operate our influence the correct way. Yes. I'm reminded a man of the scripture in Joshua 1, I believe Joshua 1 around 3, when Moses had already, amen, transitioned and Joshua, he was preparing, amen, to lead Israel across, amen, the Jordan River. And God said something, amen, to Joshua that blew my mind. He said, Joshua, this day. I'm going to magnify you in the sight of the people so that so that the people would know that as I was with Moses, so shall I be, amen, with you. Amen. At this point of juncture of Israel's life, Israel had gotten to a place of getting accustomed and comfortable to the leadership of Moses. His voice to them was a comforting sign, amen, that God was still, amen, with them and leading them. But in the transition of leadership, God decided, amen, to use somebody else. And at this time, he raised up this young man by the name of Joshua, amen, that even though he had the favor and the hand of Moses, uh, he did not have the ear of the people. And God understand, he understood that this people, amen, got custom, amen, to Moses that they will not hear, amen, what Joshua is saying. And so God told Joshua, boy, I'm going to give you, amen, the same thing that I did. Amen to Moses. And as I give it to you, they're going to know that the same God that worked it out for Moses is going to be the same God that works it out. Amen for you. And what God literally did was he gave Joshua, somebody say, divine influence. Amen. Say it again. Divine influence. Divine influence is when God steps into your situation and do some things concerning you, amen, for somebody else. And in case you did not recognize or understand that God is not moving in your life just for you. Oh, help me preach it here today. Amen. Everything that God gives you, he don't give it to you just for you. Amen. He ain't give you that money just for you. That favor just for you. That blessing just for you. That increase, that anointing, amen, just for you. But everything that God, amen, placed in your hand is designed to be a blessing to somebody else. And when you understand the power 
power of influence. You understand that God may have given it to me, but God is causing me, amen, to use it for somebody else. Oh, look at somebody and tell them, God gonna bless you real good. But don't trip because the blessing that God brings in your life is not just for you. Tell somebody, it's for somebody else. Or tell somebody, don't hog up all the blessing. I love, amen, pig feet. I love Paul Mars. Why every time I'm in the kitchen, you in the kitchen. But tell somebody that God is going to do it through you. The Bible says, I got five minutes. I'm going to hoop and get on out of here. You must understand, people of God, that as much as influence is the capacity to cause something to happen. Or tell somebody, tell somebody, I need something to happen in my life. Oh, I got the wrong type of faith folk in here today. Oh, come on, come with your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you need God to do something in your life. You need God to work something in your life. And oftentimes, even though God is able to do things from heaven to earth, even though God is able to use angelic, amen, tools and angels, oftentimes when God wants to do something in your life, he going to use somebody. Oh, come on here. Come on here. Come on here. If every time God wants to bless your life, when you gave your testimony about this building, uh, that as you was wondering, God was already working it out. And God was setting the stage uh, so you could connect to this man uh, that had the keys to what you needed. Oh, come on, somebody. Tell somebody that my influence uh, is not just for me, uh, but it's to open some doors uh, to somebody else. About to get out of here and go home. Look at somebody and say, God has anointed you with some divine influence. Uh, that God caused you amen, to open some door. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Oftentimes when folk get in trouble, we say, oh, just pray about it all. Oh, just trust God. Oh, just believe God. Oh, just stand on the word. And that's wonderful. But sometimes uh, God uses you to be the blessing. Oh, the Bible says if you see your brother destitute and need for food and you have it, you got to be the blessing. Don't tell me to pray for it and you can do something about it. Look at somebody again and say, God ain't bless you just for you, but he bless you to bless my life. So here, get ready to close, here is the purpose of influence. The reason why influence is so important and impactful, Pastor Lee, is this. Is that it brings transition. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody say influence, influence. brings transition. Brings Amen. That influence, it, it, my God, it literally means that God brings movement Jesus. which creates momentum. Yes. Yes. I wish I had some Bible folk in here on the day. Amen. The reason why God, amen, uses influence, amen, is not for nobody to be deep, but to cause movement in the life of somebody else. Because the truth of the matter is in this post, amen, COVID culture, that there's many believers that's been stuck, amen, in the rut that they're in. Amen. They've been defeated. They've been discouraged. They've been despondent. They've been dejected. And in this season, God is raising up a remnant of people that he's getting ready to pour his influence on. Not so you can lord over them, but that you can move them to their next dimension. Oh, here it is. Wait a minute. Just tell somebody lift your hand and say, God anoint me to move somebody. Uh -huh. God has called a man, man, me to move somebody out of darkness into the marvelous light. Uh, you've been called, amen, to take somebody that's in prison and move them into a place of liberty and freedom in God. Uh, and the reason why God, amen, needs influential people because some folk won't move unless the right person come along. Oh, come on, somebody say, I got to lean with it and rock with it on the day. I got to grab somebody and pull them out of what they in uh, to where they need to be. And so we understand that influence.
influence is movement. Yes. That's right. And whenever God gives you influence for somebody, the responsibility is to move them yes. Yes. from where they are yes. to where God called them to be. Yes. Yes. Pastor Kyle has a measure of influence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. His assignment is to move you yes. from Lodabar yes. into the king's table. Yes. His assignment is to move you from depression yes. into overflow. Yes. Oh, somebody say, move me, Reverend, move me, Reverend, yes. move me, Reverend. Amen. It's, it's his job to move you, amen, from, amen, outside of God yes. into the safety of the ark of God. Yes. Somebody say, I got to move, I got to shift, I got to go into another place. Because whenever God, amen, gives you influence, uh, your assignment is to move somebody. Yeah. I told the light, I told the light, I said, if I get a Range Rover, yeah. I want everybody to have one. Right. Y'all, y'all miss that. Right. I said, I said, if I get a new house, I want y'all to have a new house. Amen. We all moving on up in here. We all moving to the deluxe apartment in the sky. I, I tell somebody, if you're going to hang from around me, you got to have an ability to move me to where God called me to be. Matter of fact, tag three people and say, stop being stuck. Let who God has assigned for your life to move you to deeper depths in God. Getting ready to go. Yeah. That Jesus yeah. had influence. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Jesus yes, had divine influence. Yes, influence was all in Jesus' life. Yes. Because Jesus had a way of causing an effect on what he did in. Y'all yes. yes. miss yeah. that, mother. You got it. Thank you for praying for me, mother. One got it out of about honey. See, 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 Jesus calls in effect to what he enter in. Y y matter of fact, matter of fact, say this with me. Say, say, I'm a cause and effect to what I enter into. Oh, I got the wrong over here. I, I, I'm gonna cause an effect into what I jump into. Y'all don't believe me. I got I got Bible. Y'all remember a Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro? Amen. They found themselves, amen, inside a fiery furnace. But what King Nebuchadnezzar did not understand is that even though you got me in the furnace, I know somebody that has amen, enough effect that if you just get in here with me. That's the wrong folk in here today. Uh -huh. Tell somebody, amen, just come on in here with me. Amen, because I got enough effect that when I enter in to your situation, things got to change. The man said, wait a minute. We put in three. But there's a fourth man that's walking around. And the Bible says when they came out of that fiery furnace, their clothes wasn't burnt and they didn't even smell like folk. But can you just high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is causing you that when you enter into a place to have an effect to change somebody's life. Look at somebody and say, I just can't go to church. I got to enter in. Oh, y'all missed the revelation in here. I just don't go. I enter in. Because when I, that's why the Bible said, enter into his gates. With thanksgiving, enter into his court. Tell somebody, we just ain't come. We're entering in. Because when I praise and you praise, everybody got to. Look at somebody and say, we got to enter in. Yeah, 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 that's the kind of effect, amen, that Jesus had. He he told fishermen, physicians, tax collectors yes, to follow him. Yes, yes. My Ooh. God, my God. Oh, Businessmen. He said, y'all come follow me. Yeah. Physicians, y'all yeah. come and follow me. Yeah. Tax collectors, y'all come and follow me. And the Bible says that they straightway yeah. left uh -huh. all yes. for him. Yes. What kind of man? What kind of man? He tell you leave my job yes. and hang with me. Kind of there had to be some influence yes. on his life. 
Because another revelation of influence is when you catch it, you can't catch the revelation of influence and not see the increase that's attached to it. Oh, come on, somebody say, Jesus had influence. Hey, my somebody said, God, give me divine influence. Amen. Amen. That's why I love, amen, Pastor Man, because Pastor Man has, amen, divine influence. Oh, oh, let, let, let me do this. I'm just going to get to the text. I'm getting out of here. The text says this. It's all I want to preach. The text says two words. Jesus increased. Jesus increased. Now that word increase doesn't mean necessarily to have more. Uh -huh. Word increase here means growth. That 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 even Jesus had to grow. Yeah. Tell somebody, I know you don't want to hear this, but tell your neighbor, it's time for you to grow up. Uh, because the Bible said that Jesus had a man to grow. He had to increase. He had to get to a place, amen, where he put away, amen, childish things. And he got serious about the things of God. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, you got to grow in this season. You can't keep on coming to church and not growing. You can't keep on hearing the word and not growing. You can't keep on shouting and dancing and not growing, praying and not growing, giving and not growing. Tell somebody, God is blessing in this season those that will grow. Somebody say, I got to grow. I got to grow. I got to grow. The Bible says that Jesus grew in three areas. Yes. Well, it's right there. In the text. It's right there. Three. Three things in the text. Yes, sir. He said that Jesus had to grow in. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Wisdom. Uh huh. Stature. Uh huh. And favor. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tell somebody you got to grow. You got to grow. You got to grow. You got to grow. Hammer said you got to pray just to make it today. Come on, you got to grow. The first thing that Jesus grew in was wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. It is doing what you know. Jesus had to learn through wisdom how to think like God. See, the problem with many of us, amen, we don't know how to think, amen, like God. I remember there was a movement uh, some years ago, and the braces used to be WWYD, what would Jesus do? Amen, because they were saying, amen, every decision that you make, you ought to think like Jesus thinks. That's why Paul said it this way, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus, and the reason why we need wisdom, so that we would lose our crazy mind and adopt his mind. Tell somebody, you need some wisdom to think like Jesus. The problem in the church is we don't think like them. We think like ourselves. But tell people, you got to lose your mind. You got to lose, amen, your mind and adopt the mind of Christ because wisdom said, Mother Quince, that I think like them. Somebody say Wisdom. wisdom. The second thing you had to increase in, the Bible says, is stature. Yeah. Now, stature means he had to mature. Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference between growth and mature. You can grow and not mature. Yes, sir. You can be you can be a full grown man and be a fool. Amen. Because growth don't mean that you mature. Right. Growth yes. just means that you got bigger or you learned some amen. stuff. Amen, somebody. But the Bible said that Jesus, amen, had to mature. Yes. Tell somebody, you got to mature. Yes. Amen. Yes. Even Paul said to the church, he said, you ought to be on meat. Yes. Well, yes. All this Bible study, yes. all this word, yes. all this prayer we do, yes. we ought to be able to go to another level by now. He said, but the frustration is when you ought to be on meat, you're still on milk. Or tell somebody, tell somebody, at some point you got to come off the infamy and be able to chew a steak by yourself. Oh, y'all in, in the wrong church in here today. If you're going to get the blessings of the Lord, you can't be immature and operate in the blessings. 
blessings of God. You got to show God that you grew up in Samaria. Can you believe? Yes, sir. And with all this preaching I do at the line, My God. all this prophesying we do, oh God, I mean to just isolate you. Can you do it too? All this preaching we do, all this prophesying we do, all of this laying hands we do, yes, all these Zoom meetings we have, all of this, this and that and that, that folk got the audacity oh, to still not want to grow up. My God. Oh, Come on, Pastor. Oh, oh, I've always said, if I go to a uh, uh, old country buffet. Uh -huh. Golden Corral uh -huh. in Rochester. I got it. Yes, sir. And I leave there hungry. It's my own fault. Because there was food everywhere. I just was too foolish not to grab it. But I heard somebody say that the table is praying and the feast of the Lord is going on. Tell somebody if you leave here hungry, it's your own fault. It's too much word and too much prophecy and too much revelation and too much anointing for me to leave here still like a baby. Look at somebody and say, you got to mature, you got to mature, you got to mature. I know that the Lord, amen, told you you're getting a Range Rover, but you got to mature before you get it. Listen, talk about the wrong folk in here today. True. Amen. The Bible says that as great and anointed as David was as a teenager, he had to take his hind part back in the field. Yeah. Well, look at somebody and say, You ain't you ain't all that. You ain't so anointed. Amen. That you feel because you got a collar, that you got to stop learning. My God today. Matter of fact, because you got the collar to make you more determined. Amen. To feed yourself with the word of God. You'll, you'll be surprised how many folk got collars but can't lead nobody to Christ. Sit down somewhere. You can't pray the prayer of salvation. You don't even know how to pray the blood in the body, but you want a collar. Sit down. got to have some maturity. Then the third thing I'm getting out of here is 801. Sister Marshawn, I got five minutes. We got to go. The third thing that Jesus increased in uh, was favor. Now watch this. He increased in favor. Wow. Which means that favor has different levels. Teacher. He had to increase it because the favor I needed at 20 ain't the same what I need at 50. At 20, I, I can't use no Cracker Jack favor right now. I need some debt cancellation favor right now. I need some grown man favor. I don't need no sticks and stone favor. I need God to do something in my life. Tell somebody, I need, I need a dope kind of favor. How? Wait a minute. How did Jesus grow in wisdom? Grow in stature. Grow in faith. How? Because, whoo, somebody say, he passed the test. Oh, there's a test. There's a test in wisdom. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's a test in wisdom. There's a test in maturity. There's a test in favor. And the way that I increase my influence is whenever I get a test, I pass it and go to the next level. All right, bridge. Tell somebody you got to pass some tests. Now, here, here's what you can't do. Don't get mad at me because I'm passing. That's right. Because you could have passed like I passed. You could have took notes like I took notes. You could have you came to class like I came to class. But you want to play around. I don't have to apologize for being blessed. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, uh, pass your test. Yeah. But what I love, Sister Tammy Robinson, about the text. 
preaching. The Bible says that Jesus had it not just with God, but he had it with man. Oh, I feel like you can hear right now. I, I, I'm reminded of uh, in the Bible when, what's that boy's name? Uh, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I uh, said he was tired of living the way he was living. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that Esau was coming. He thought to kill him. Yes, yes. He had wronged Esau and they told him, yo, he coming to get you. Yes. We need to go somewhere. Yes. And uh, he told his wife and children, y'all stay back. Because yes. I need something from God. Yes, my God. The Bible says that when uh, Jacob got alone, yes. that the Bible says that he wrestled. Yes. With an angelic being. Yes. 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 The Bible says he wrestled, but the angel could not prevail. Yes. The Bible says the angel asked Jacob, What is your name? Yes. He said, My name is Jacob. He said, No, your name ain't no more Jacob but Israel. Yes. He said, Because you have prevailed and found power with God and with man. Yes. Look at somebody and say, It ain't just about God. You got to learn how to deal with man. Oh, somebody say, oh Lord. And what we come to find out in the church is that we're real good on God things. But we ain't good on dealing with one another. And if God is going to bless your life, you got to learn how to not just walk with God, but you got to learn how to walk with man too. Can I get a witness in here? Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's time to get on out of here. And it's time to run for the border. But find you a neighbor, say, neighbor, it is your time to go to another level of increase and to go to another level of influence. And tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to do it like Jesus did it. You got to learn how to grow in the grace of God. And you got to learn how to pass your tests. Because the Bible said that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. Grab your neighbor and shake him by the hand and say, neighbor, say, God is getting ready. Bless your life, but you got to grow up in some areas. Thank God is getting ready to do some things for you, but you got to get your wisdom together because God is getting ready to bring you in a season that God is going to cause somebody that don't know your name to tap you on the shoulder and say that God send me to be a blessing in your life. Grab yourself and shake yourself and say, self, I gotta get myself together because God is ready to do a work in my life. Cause the devil, he meant it for evil. The devil, he tried to take me out. The devil, he tried to lose my mind. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my brains kept me in the battle. And if you can find you somebody that you can link up with and lean with it and rock with it, say, lean and rock and pull up and shake up and say,
Look out the leader! 